There are just some things that fill me with indescribable joy. Certain things that invoke both emotion and happiness from within me. We all have particular things like that, that will forever hold in high regard. Things we will cherish forever. In this episode, we're looking at the greatest thing in Transformers. Knockout I mean Transformers Prime! Transformers Prime is not only my favourite Transformers show in existence, but also one of my favourite cartoons ever. The whole show just seems like a love letter to Transformers fans, what with intense action, hilarious humour, and tons of fan service. Maybe not so much as animated, but still enough to keep G1 fans on their toes. Collectively, the Transformers fandom has decided that Prime is one of the greatest Transformers shows in existence, and while there are those that disagree, Transformers Prime is highly regarded as one of the best Transformers shows to date. In this video, I'm going to delve a little bit into why I think that is. Starting with... It felt like a series that actually gave a shit about being a good show. It wasn't a show blatantly throwing toys in your face, and it wasn't a show that kept dumbing down everything for the sake of getting the thumbs up from Cartoon Network. Transformers Prime didn't hold anything back, and it was fantastic. You got blood, violence, and even human death, something that no other Transformers cartoon has dared show before. Prime adopted a darker tone than most Transformers shows before it taking inspiration from the popularity of the live-action movies, and though not shying away from the occasional humour, Prime overall had a more mature tone than shows before it. Immediately, Prime sets the scene by killing off a supposed main character in Cliffjumper. It right off the bat let you know what kind of show you were in for, and it maintained that level of maturity and awesomeness throughout. It felt like the perfect blend between the classic Transformers formula and the mature themes and violence of the movies, allowing it to be a great starting point for those coming from the films to get into Transformers. It's familiar enough for both movie fans and fans of the original, and blends the two styles together to make something really special. It actually killed off characters. When characters died, they stayed dead. Well, I except for Optimus, Megatron, and Bumblebee, but I'm sure we all know why that is. It had enough humour and characters to appeal to younger viewers, and enough violence and plot to keep older audiences engaged. It doesn't continually pull punches and pretend everyone's okay after everything that happens. It shows that actions do have consequences, and bad things do happen to the good guys. But at the same time, Prime was done in a way that still made it feel like an enjoyable kid show, instead of the bloodbath that Transformers is now so closely attributed to. Prime didn't... Resurrect Dreadwing after he was shot through the freaking chest. Cliffjumper actually died tragically, being mutated by the Dark Energon instead of magically revived by it. And Breakdown... Well, Breakdown's fate was just cruel. I recall the very first time I saw the designs for the cast way back in 2010, and recall hating them. I genuinely hated them. That's certainly not the same nowadays, though. Mm. I thought they looked too skeletal and freakish, more alien than robot, more humanoid than machine. The Prime designs are very different to how the characters have been in the past, but are all the better for it. They look fantastic, and the animation of Prime brings them to life fantastically. Whether you love it or hate it, it's undeniable that Prime's animation is gorgeous compared to this shit. It was expensive, it looked like it required a lot of work to create, and all that work paid off. Transformers Prime doesn't come out as a product created only to make Hasbro revenue from toys. It's a show that cares about its characters and the story it was trying to tell. Can I just gush over the fights in this show? Fantastically choreographed, thrilling and intense, and overall a joy to watch. Optimus vs Megatron, Dreadwing vs Optimus, Soundwave vs Wheeljack, The Wreckers vs Predaking, Magnus vs Megatron, ah, it was so cool! These are the fights that Transformers fans have craved, not ones with excessive amounts of bullets that do about as much damage as hate comments, or ones where it's impossible to tell what the hell is going on as a mess of black and red metal mate with one another. Up close and personal battles that were just as brutal as they were exciting. If anything, Prime does a magnificent job on the battle scenes, more so than any other Transformers show I've ever seen. <coughs> it was a show that centered on an overarching story and constantly changed up the status quo, instead of resetting everything just in case it didn't get another season. <coughs> it gave Transformers fans everything they wanted. If anything, serving as a modern Beast Wars, what with the small but interesting cast of characters, violence and heavy emphasis on plot, and of course, the expensive animation. Prime had plenty of Transformers references, as well as introducing some new and awesome concepts, particularly the relics that serve the major importance in the series, my personal favourites being the Apex Armour and Phase Shifter. And its finale was just... Mm. I mean, the whole killing Bumblebee thing was a bit dumb, but at least it provided a genuine excuse to bring back his voice. Unlike some other Transformers media. Bumblebee killing Megatron in the climax of the show was incredibly satisfying. The entire final sequence was brilliant, but it was seeing B enact his revenge against Megatron for everything he had done to him, all while speaking in a voice that had been absent for the entire series, that made it such a memorable moment. I think it was great that B was the one to off Megatron and not Prime. 
Somehow, I just don't think it would have been right for Optimus to do it. And then came Predacons Rising, which I personally felt was the perfect ending to the series. An adventure set entirely on Cybertron, where Unicron resurrects Megatron, Bumblebee takes command of the Autobots, and Knockout joins the Autobots and there are more Predacons and ah, it's so good! Megatron ending the Decepticon cause felt like such a great finale. I know I may be alone in thinking that, but having Prime sacrifice himself to restore Cybertron felt like one of the only times his death actually had a reason to happen. And they never brought him back- oh god damn it. Regardless of Robots in Disguise's massacre of Prime's legacy, I absolutely loved Prime as a whole, and felt that the ending was a great way to wrap the series up without leaving too many plot holes open. Too many, I said. The characters in Transformers Prime are all amazing. If I'm going to be completely, 100% entirely honest, Optimus Prime is a bit of a boring character. Now, sir, this is the opinion police. Wait, wait, not again. I love Optimus, don't get me wrong, but he's not exactly the deepest or most interesting character out there. And to be honest, I kind of like that. The way Prime portrays Optimus is perfect. He's portrayed as this flawless and infinitely wise being that all of the other characters in the show look up to. He's a leader and an inspiration. And not to discredit Gary Chalk or David Kay, but Peter Cullen being Optimus Prime is just... Despite his usual one-dimensionness, Prime was shown to be more than meets the eye in Prime. He was given almost a father figure-like role, being seen as a kind and caring leader who genuinely cared about each of his Autobots, and it was so cool seeing his relationship with each of his team members. It was nice to see such a warm and likeable Optimus, returning him to the core personality type that made him so lovable in the first place, instead of the psychopathic and remorseless killer the Prime from the movies has become famous for. One of the arcs in Prime sees Optimus losing his memories and reverting to his Orion Pax state, which is one of the best storylines in the whole show, as it sees a naive and innocent Optimus working alongside Megatron, whom he still believes to be his friend. It's always interesting seeing heroes and villains working together, and it works extremely well in Transformers, especially because of the dynamic the two have in this show. And Prime gives us plenty of scenes of Megatron and Optimus working together, though in this arc we really got to see what it was like for Megs and Prime to be friends. It was an incredibly interesting storyline, where we really got to see what these characters were like before the war. Previously established characters who have just been there became interesting and some of my favourite Transformers characters ever, Ratchet, Smokescreen, even RC. It portrayed the characters pretty faithfully, and the changes they made to the characters weren't bad or blatantly obvious. Prime didn't take the same risks like Animated, but it worked out for the better, choosing to expand upon already interesting character aspects instead of rewriting characters entirely. I mean, I can't say I like the mute Bumblebee all that much, but if we have to be stuck with him, I'd much rather take the Prime version over any other version. Now, I can't exactly claim to be an expert when it comes to voice acting and dialogue. Sonic, you dead meat! But I personally think the voice work in Prime was fantastic. The Autobots especially. Like, Bumblebee's voice acting was amazing. I think Prime's greatest accomplishment is actually making Ratchet an interesting character. We all know how badass Ratchet can be, and yet he's never had the chance to shine. Prime finally gives him this chance, both to be a badass and comic relief. Oh, can I need? That. The Wheeljack in Prime is most likely the biggest difference between Prime and previously established material, though it worked out for the better. This Wheeljack is one of my favourite Wheeljacks ever. I think I like him even more than the original one. I mean, he was certainly better than this piece of shit. His relationship with Bulkhead was interesting and felt genuine. That's one of the best parts about this show. It conveyed fantastically the relationships each of the bots had with one another, and humanised them to the point of making them feel genuine. The Decepticons were just as compelling as the Autobot protagonist, which is the way it should be. Very few Transformers shows have managed to have the combatants of both sides of the Cybertronian conflict interesting, and Prime is the only Transformers show where I actually like the Decepticons more. The show dedicated ample time showcasing what the Decepticons do in their spare time, as opposed to just, ah, I'm evil, we're gonna do evil things because we're evil. The Prime Starscream is my favourite Starscream of all time. <laughs> His aspects of cowardice from his original G1 self are amplified to amazing effect, and he becomes such a compelling and hilarious character. And don't even get me started on Soundwave. I have my bias, considering Soundwave is, and probably always will be, one of my favourite Transformers characters in existence, but the way Prime portrayed him was just perfect. Soundwave says four words throughout the whole show, doesn't even have a face, and yet still comes out as one of the most memorable characters in the whole series. He was silent and terrifying, and it was very rare in this show for him to lose a battle. His character is one of my favourites in Prime, and he has some of the best scenes in the show, especially his ass whooping of Arachnid and his duel with Wheeljack. Seriously, that scene where Soundwave beats the shit out of the treacherous Arachnid was one of the best in the show. I'm gonna take over the Decepticons! Haha, <laughs> no. Soundwave just doesn't care. It's both hilarious and terrifying. This is how you make a character cool without causing them to appear overly edgy. And, uh, Knockout was just... 
Juicy. Knockout has the second sexiest voice I've ever heard in a cartoon. Yo. Take me now, you goddamn beautiful. Each of the Autobots and Decepticons had distinct and individual personalities. You know, that thing that Michael Bay movies hate so much. <laughs> and they were brought to life by the gorgeous animation and fluid voice work. Each one of the characters in this show are likable and memorable. Most of the characters in this show are- The human characters were fine. They're not quite sorry levels of having a genuine reason to be there, but they're not nearly as annoying as some human Transformers characters. Jack, Miko, and Raph were fine. Yes, even Miko. They weren't overly annoying. I'll agree to disagree on Miko. They didn't constantly take center stage and so obscure the actual Transformers like some other Transformers media. And overall, I actually quite like them. You really got to feel and care for the human characters in Prime. I didn't feel that the show was too forceful with them, unlike a lot of Transformers shows are, and their relationships with their respective bots was really cute and nice to see. I know this is an unpopular opinion because many didn't like the human characters in Prime, but if I'm gonna be honest, I'd rather take these guys over this piece of shit any day. And of course, Agent F***ing Fowler, the best human Transformers character in existence. Agent Fowler was a seriously cool character. Almost every single scene he was in was fantastic or incredibly badass. He stands up to Optimus Prime, withstood torture from Starscream, and this... Also, I can as cheeseburger. I'm sorry. What? The inevitable human anti Transformer organization, Mech, is in my opinion one of the least sucky human villains in a Transformer show. I mean, they all suck and are always completely unnecessary, but I felt Mech was on occasion rather formidable, and thoroughly enjoyed the events surrounding Breakdown's demise and subsequent resurrection and death. They weren't that bad as opposed to, say, previous attempts at the same thing. Much like Beast Machines, Prime found a way to give the Autobots something to fight without having to constantly come up with new characters, and this was done through drones. The Vehicons pretty much account for the lack of laziness in every other aspect of the show. I can understand why these things show up so often, considering it would be easy for the animators to copy and paste Steve everywhere. But the show realized this, and as time went on, Vehicons served less as cannon fodder and more as comic relief. Plus, I think we all deep down love seeing the Autobots kill things over and over in violent ways. Come on, who doesn't? Prime had plenty of awesome story arcs, many of which are some of my favourite stories ever told in the entire Transformers series. Some of my favourite moments apparently shared by a lot of you include the aforementioned Orion Pax arc, seeing Optimus and Megatron fight side by side in One Shall Rise, the fantastic relic hunt that spans several episodes, the two-part Operation Bumblebee arc that showed how much B valued his alt mode and the lengths he would go to to restore it, and anything involving Knockout and Starscream, just to name a few. Though I must confess, I have always admired your lustrous finish. <laughs> Seriously, those two had the best chemistry in the entire show. Ratchet and Fowler wish they could have a bromance as good as those two. And let's be honest, we all leapt for joy when Soundwave spoke. Soundwave superior. Autobots inferior. Prime ensures that it contains enough humor to let the audience ease up every now and then, and I felt that most of the jokes in the show were pretty solid. Particularly the episode where Ratchet gets jacked up on synthetic energon and becomes the best thing in the Transformers franchise ever. <laughs> Oh, and Starscream and his little scooter. Prime had its fair share of plot resolutions utilizing overused stereotypes, but a lot of the time it broke the mold. The good guys in Prime didn't always win, and Megatron had plenty of advancements and victories in Prime, which once again showed that stakes were actually present in Prime. The episode where Prime lays dying in the destroyed Autobot base was shocking and terrifying. Seeing Megatron as an actually competent and threatening villain was refreshing, as we're all used to the Megatron that does nothing but call for a retreat. Optimus doesn't always win in Prime, in fact several times it's shown that Megatron gets incredibly close to victory. It's brutal and genuinely shocking, allowing the villains in the show to actually come off as threatening, and it's what made a lot of Prime storylines so unique, engaging, and refreshing. The biggest problem and the biggest weakness of Prime is that it wasn't a kid's show. In contrast to its successor, which was a huge step down, Prime was expensive and didn't cater to the intended audience Hasbro usually focuses on. So I guess they figured they could earn more for less, clearly deciding to go the lazy route when following on from the show. And because of that, we now have this shit. More on that in another video. I hate you, you piece of- Though many may perceive me as a critical or negative person, I'm actually not. I just talk about stuff I hate more than stuff I like. And this is because I'm a lot more critical and analytical when it comes to discussing something I don't like, as I'm able to justify why I don't like it. However, when it comes to cases such as Transformers Prime, I just switch off. I'm oblivious to all the flaws this show has, and whenever I conjure up an image of it in my mind, I can't think of any imperfections. Prime to me doesn't have any glaring errors that plague most Transformers shows, 
As for that, I find it very hard to critique. I know it isn't perfect, but my infatuation with it blocks me from properly realizing any major issues it has. I genuinely cannot think of anything wrong with it. I mean, maybe it's the fact that they never explain why Raph can understand Bubblebee, or the obvious fact that most of the budget went into the eyebrow animations. It's obvious that some plot lines were rushed and character deaths were rather forced, <coughs> makeshift. But if I'm being entirely honest, I think they did well considering the constant issues they faced behind the scenes. It didn't feel overly long or dragged out. I think Prime was the perfect length, and in my opinion had a fantastic ending. Very few shows actually end in a satisfying way, but Prime nailed it. And though yes, I would have loved for the show to continue, reading up on some of the ideas planned for the fourth season kind of makes me feel glad it was cancelled. Like, what the hell? Cowboys? Maximal Cowboys? If you want to see a good video discussing why Prime isn't as perfect as I think it is, check out the YouTube channel Paper Planes review on the show. It's not only hilarious and entertaining, and it certainly isn't RC, Bulkhead, Wheeljack, Magnum Dong, but also a really good and critical analysis as to what was wrong with the show. So, if you disagree with all the points I'm making in this video and are one of those edgelords who thinks that Prime sucks just because it isn't G1, or even if you just want another opinion, definitely check it out. He's horrendously underrated. Ah, yep, yeah, nope, there we go. I found something wrong with Prime. The clip show episode sucked. Transformers Prime was an absolutely amazing show, and will forever be my favorite Transformers cartoon of all time, its legacy still carrying on to this day. And then Robots in Disguise came along and shat all over it. Regardless, Prime is a perfect example of don't be sad because it's over, smile because it happened. If I'm being honest, I'm just grateful we got a Transformers show with this much attention to detail and this much love put into it. Prime, to me, is near perfection. It's everything I could have asked for from a Transformers show, and its story and characters will have a lasting impact on me for years to come. I don't imagine we'll have anything as good as Prime anytime soon, but I guess that'll just make Prime stand out even more. Transformers Prime is definitely something that I will cherish forever.